Well, it turns out that some of the resistance liberals that you argued with on Twitter who likely called you a Russian troll, uh, these folks might actually be paid trolls themselves. At least one of them is because a gigantic resistance liberal Twitter account, Brooklyn Dad Defiant, he's a paid operative for the Democratic Party. <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Gotcha, bitch. So it seems like all of the bashing of Bernie Sanders during the primary, the attempt to discredit Tara Reid, Joe Biden's accuser, has paid off because it ended up landing him a position at a super PAC that is incredibly lucrative for this individual. It pays to be loyal to the Democratic Party, apparently. Now, he does disclose in his Twitter bio that he's the senior advisor to Really American. And as far as the Wayback Machine goes, which is to November of 2020, it does show that he did disclose this back then as well. So we don't necessarily know how long this affiliation has been intact. But very clearly, this is something that a lot of people did not know about. Now, this isn't necessarily surprising because everything that he says and does, uh, you know, it really points to him being some sort of like a literal paid shill. Having said that though, there's a lot of questions, like there's there's not a lot that we can definitively say, but here's what we do know. As Beth Lynch points out on Twitter, he received $57,000 from the really American pack. So it's obvious that there is a financial incentive there at a minimum for him to say the things that he says. And this really is something that like i'm not accusing him of committing any illegal activities here but i will say that this is very obviously unethical so as a youtuber if i were to say um advertise nike for example or ipad um if i were to do that oh i just activated siri if i were to do that and you didn't know that i was getting paid by apple to advertise their products that would be pretty immoral that would be really unethical and fraudulent. So on YouTube, if we were to do an advertisement, we would have to explicitly state that we are getting paid to say the things that we're saying about said product. We are legally required to do that. In fact, there was this gigantic scandal, I think, with Kim Kardashian, where she was promoting products on Instagram and wasn't fully disclosing that she was getting paid to advertise these particular products. So this might not necessarily be like a one-to-one -one comparison here, but all of the ethical questions here are present. And this is just extremely fucked up and it gets you to wonder like how many people how many of these resistance liberals who uh, argue with progressives and bashed bernie sanders how many of them are also on the payroll of some democratic party super PAC? So for more on this, we go to Lydia Wang of Refinery29, who writes, With nearly 900,000 followers, Majid Padalin, known as Brooklyn Dad Defiant, or just Brooklyn Dad, is one of Twitter's most vocal supporters of Joe Biden. It comes with some confusion, though, as the account prides itself on being a whistleblower and steadfast liberal. But during the past election cycle, Padalin received backlash from leftists for, among other things, urging Bernie Sanders to drop out of the presidential race and discrediting Tara Reid's allegations of sexual assault. Now, now he's facing renewed backlash amid revelations that he accepted tens of thousands in donations from a Democratic PAC. On Tuesday, several tweets began circulating with evidence that Really American, a pro-Biden PAC, paid Brooklyn Dad nearly $60,000 in 2020. In his bio, he says that he works for the PAC as a senior advisor, but many users began arguing that major Democratic donors are paying him to espouse certain opinions and theories with his large following. Since Biden took office, Padlin has continuously tweeted out his support for the new administration and defended the president from criticism surrounding the rollout of stimulus checks, the fact that he hasn't yet held a solo press conference, and more. The controversy's grimmest implication, of course, relates to Brooklyn Dad's most questionable tweets, his criticisms of Reed, and his since-deleted suggestions that Governor Andrew Cuomo, who has been accused of sexual harassment, might be the victim of a smear campaign. Although Padalin often rightfully calls out Donald Trump and the GOP for their abusive policies and personal behavior, he's been criticized for failing to hold other Democrats accountable for the same things. And now we know why. Now we know why. Now, it could very well be the case that at some point before he had this in his bio, he disclosed that he was working for the really American Packer, was a senior advisor getting paid from them. But the question is, like, how far should someone go to disclose 
a very obvious and problematic conflict of interest. So, like, let's go back to the example of me, like, advertising for Apple, which I'm not, by the way, and would never do. If I were advertising, you know, how phenomenal the iPad is, and I use it for every single show, um, but I only put, like, that disclosure that I'm getting paid by Apple in my description box, would many people see it? Would many people know about this conflict of interest? Am I being explicit enough? Like, there's a reason why, where if you see an advertisement, on another YouTube channel. They're going to very explicitly point out multiple times usually that this is an advertisement because if they do not do that, they are breaking the law. Like I watch a lot of gaming channels and sometimes they'll advertise like apps or they'll advertise like a particular game or product from a gaming company or third party, you know, um, accessory for the Nintendo Switch. If they do not put in their video uh, both in text and audio, that this is an advertisement, then they could get into trouble for that. So, I mean, what's the standard here for Twitter? I mean, this is someone who very clearly has a gigantic following. He has almost 90 or 900, excuse me, 1,000 followers on Twitter. That's more than all of my accounts combined. My Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, he's way bigger than me. So if I were to do something like this, I would expect pushback. I would expect to be called out. If I were to do an advertisement, I would know to be explicit about, you know, the financial incentive that I have to say the things that I say. So why does this individual get to get away with this when what he does is a lot more detrimental to society because it has, has political implications? Like to uh, impugn the character of someone who is sharing their Me Too story, Tara Reid, that's really disgusting. Now, again, I don't know if he's getting paid specifically to put out individual tweets like are they saying hey uh tweet this bad thing about bernie sanders i don't necessarily know but the financial link that he has that in and of itself is a huge issue and as journalist walker bragman points out political operatives should have to disclose their affiliations on social media that's my feeling on this brooklyn dad situation online astroturfing is a problem even when it's not russian he made more than fifty-seven thousand dollars in six months from the super PAC. that's more than most journalists i know that's upsetting all really american PAC does is make shitty ads they don't seem to have a lot of viewership either this ted cruz ad has three thousand views now the question is like if the ads that the super PAC is putting out isn't actually generating that many eyeballs, then it can't be bringing in that much revenue organically, right? Uh, so how are they getting all of this money? Well, like all super PACs, it's being funded by big donors. And as Walker Bragman points out, going through really American PACs, big donors, I've already found a healthcare CEO and a hedge fund partner. And I know that it's not just occurring on the Democratic Party side. There's a lot of paid shills on the Republican Party side as well. But when you are trying to influence leftists in Democratic Party politics and you're getting paid to do that, you have that financial incentive, that's obviously an issue. It's unethical. So this goes back to the question like, what should we expect from folks? And as Pamacious points out, there's a difference between acknowledging you're a senior advisor to a PAC and disclosing that you're being paid to influence American voters on social media. Every tweet and the profile should include a paid advertisement disclaimer. And you might think that that is a little bit too far, but that's what we'd have to do for YouTube videos. Now, whether or not you can compare a YouTube video to an individual tweet, I don't know if you can do that. But What's very obvious is that this shill should have made it abundantly clear that he was getting paid either to say the things that he said or had a financial incentive to say the things that he said. That is a lot of money. $57,000 in six months? Come on, man. We don't have all of the details about his relationship specifically and what they paid him for. We can't say, we can't prove, there's no evidence to say at this point as far as I know that he was paid to tweet. But this conflict of interest is obviously troubling. And this isn't the first time that the Democratic Party has tried to, you know, disperse shills into social media in order to tip the discourse in their favor. Back in 2016, let me remind you that David Brock, he put down $1 million for online paid trolls to defend Hillary Clinton against uh, what he deemed were attacks from Bernie Sanders supporters. So, uh, I mean, I don't know what's left to say. Again, there's a lot of um, things that we don't know here with regard to like his relationship specifically. But what we do know, as of now, don't know when specifically he started to 
point out the fact that he is affiliated with this super PAC, we know that he's a paid shill and the things that he says online on his gigantic platform are influenced by the fact that he's getting money to promote the Democratic Party and Joe Biden. That is um, not shocking, <laughs> to say the least. But nonetheless, uh, we still have to call it out because this is disgusting. Like you're poisoning political discourse because you want to make money and lots of money. And it's it's really lucrative, apparently, to be a paid shill for the Democratic Party. But that doesn't mean that you should get a pass. And if you have a gigantic platform like that, then I, I think that you should be a lot more responsible, not only in the way that you engage in uh, political discourse, but in the way that you like tell people what you're about in your disclosures of your relationships with the Democratic Party. You know, you, you, you know, you know, the, you know, the thing, thing. you're getting nervous, man, man.